So this one um, is going to be on mating systems. There are four major ma uh, mating systems, and we're gonna we're gonna stick on the first one, which is monogamy, and talk about that. And then our next video, we'll talk about the other system. And so uh, to start out with, we're, we're going to talk about infanticide. Um, just to bring this up one more time, uh, we had mentioned African lions do it, uh, langur langurs, which are a primate, do it. And it's actually good for the male because uh, it gets the female to go back, back into estrus. But what we're finding out, obviously, it's not good for the female. The female has put in an investment into this baby, and then the baby is killed. So how can the female uh, get out of this? So looking at behavior, what they've come up with is um, seasonal breeding. Uh, so instead of being able to breed kids all year long is you have a shorter breeding season. So um, there's no reason to kill the young if the female won't go back in estrus. And I'm not sure that's a behavioral choice that, that a female can make. Uh, there was also the, the theory of teaming up with other females. Uh, the idea was that, well, if, if females were to group together, uh, that, that then the male would not have the ability to kill the young. And uh, although this reasonably makes sense, it turns out they, the, uh, the African pride the lions, they never saw this um, ability. Now, they, it may occur slightly, um, but nobody has been able to pick up any statistical evidence that actually has happened. Uh, one thing that, that has happened, though, is paternity dilution. If the male is not sure whether that kid is his or not, uh, it, it is more likely that the male will tolerate those uh, individuals. And on the bottom picture, you can see there's all kinds of different animals that do infanticide. It's, it's very common out there. Uh, so um, the idea behind this is that um, females have got to figure out a way uh, to come up with uh, the ability to, to maybe just dilute uh, that. So this is, this paternity dilution, I want you to know, is probably the, the best way that we know of right now for females to uh, stop infanticide. All right, so the four mating systems, uh, you know, we have all kinds of fancy names, mono, uh, monogamy, uh, polyandry, polygyny, uh, and polygynandry. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, monogamy this time and then we'll go over the other ones later. Uh, so uh, monogamy, there's really kind of two different types. Um, and uh, we always assumed that birds were monogamous because they're sitting on a nest together and then DNA evidence came out and it turned, <laughs> turned out uh, the babies being raised are not necessarily the males. And so what we've come up with is that uh, birds are monogamous in, in general, uh, but it's called serial monogamy. They don't, they don't mate for life per se, but they mate for mating season. And so during that breeding season, they're together, and this is found in probably 90% of birds. Uh, and, and it increases fledging survival because it turns out in birds especially, it usually takes both parents uh, to, to protect the nest, uh, to bring in enough food uh, for survival. Uh, but many birds, uh, most birds, have what's called an EPC, an extra pair copulation. Uh, so the females are cheap. And again, it's probably this to get the male to stick around. We want the male to think that the kids are his, uh, but um, it, you know, so so he doesn't just abandon them. Uh, you got to be pretty careful about it. Uh, but the idea is you don't want to put you know, all your eggs in one nest. I, I guess you could say it that way, um, although they do. But you you know, the females will will cheat with other males maybe just to increase their um, chances of having um, fertile offspring. All right, so monogamous systems, the other one, uh, so that's a serial monogamy. There are some species that have lifetime monogamy. And we saw that with the um, prairie voles. Uh, we also see that with the old field mouse, uh, uh, the guy on the right-hand side. And um, uh, swans are another, as uh, a bird that, that's known for lifetime. And what that really means is lifetime is, is um, 
is until one of the partners die. It's not like if a partner dies, they, they give up. Um, but they will, they will stay together. Penguins will do this. Um, so lots of different species actually do, but, but this is not probably the most common, especially in birds. Um, and it turns out that uh, um, the lifetime monogamy, they are more apt to have more offspring this way, um, but it's under you know, very, very particular conditions. Uh, again, if the male is doing this, he is giving, um, giving up having sex with multiple females the ability to spread his uh, offspring that way. So there's got to be an advantage uh, to stick around. So that, that is the question. Why would a male choose this strategy? Uh, and so that is the look, and that's what we want to do. Um, so possible reasons. There's, there's really uh, kind of three reasons they give. Uh, the male guarding hypothesis. Uh, that uh, if the male guards the female, he knows that the babies are most likely his because he was there. Uh, the harlequin shrimp you see on the bottom, uh, that is another one that will guard the female, uh, not let her get near other males. And so the, the likelihood of um, the offspring uh, are gonna be his. So if there are a few females, uh, this is a good technique. Uh, male assistance hypothesis, uh, survival of the female offspring will be low, so you need to help and protect. And here we've got a male uh, seahorse, and you can see uh, the little male in the, in the brood pouch in front. And so it is the male that is actually raising and protecting um, uh, the mate. So this uh, uh, turns out the females are uh, less good at it, and so you, you increase your chances if you become the one. Ostriches are another group that do this. The males tend to, to raise, uh, raise the young. And then there's also uh, another possible reason, female enforced. So instead of uh, this male guarding, it's the female that is choosing to keep the male there. And so these burring beetles, what they do is they will kill a small mammal uh, to lay their eggs. The female then lays on that carcass while the eggs are developing and hatching and the male then will, wants to cheat so he goes out of the out of the burrow and he gets up on top and he starts releasing pheromones she will go up there and actually knock him off the perch uh, to, to get him to stop um, uh, uh, putting out uh, pheromones uh, so um, she's trying to you know disrupt that behavior uh, so uh, she doesn't like it <laughs> so that is this recording